Today I'll be re-reviewing Silver Bullet at Knott's Berry Farm. I'll be talking about the history, ride experience, and my overall thoughts on Knott's Berry Farm's most iconic coaster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Hey guys and welcome to 808 Coaster Life. If you're new to this channel and you love roller coasters and other theme park related stuff, please consider subscribing for quality coaster entertainment every 1-2 to two weeks. If you've been a subscriber for a decent amount of time, you all know that my first ever video was a review of this ride. I'm not going to remove the old one for nostalgia reasons, but I would like to heavily improve on that review because it's pretty terrible. Okay guys, our first coaster review that we are going to do on this channel is of Silver Boy at Knott's Berry Farm in Buena Park, California. I've been putting this off for a pretty long time because I don't remember this ride as well as others. Mainly because I've ridden it twice in 2017, but only once in 2018, which was my last ride. When you think of Knott's Berry Farm, Silver Boy would probably be one of the first things that comes to your mind because it's very well designed to fit the park and give it a nice entrance. This ride has a reputation of being one of the weakest B&M inverts, but what do I think of this ride? Having not ridden too many coasters, I'll say that this review will be, at least, a little more positive than others. Let's start with the history. On May 28, 2003, Cedar Fair trademarked the name Silver Bullet. In September of that year, construction began with no announcement from the park until December 1, 2003. The final track piece was installed about a year later after construction began on September 10, 2004. This ride opened on a unique date, December 7, 2004, which makes sense because it's a year-round park. Which makes me think, will we see a December opening for Icebreaker or Iron Gwazi? Just a thought. Silver Bullet was one of four rides that opened at the park the same year. The others being Riptide, Scream and Swing, which are both defunct, and Lucy's Tugboat, now known as Rapid River Run. 2004 sounded like a very promising year for Knott's Berry Farm. This ride is a B&M invert with a max height of 146 feet, 109 foot drop, 55 miles per hour, 3,125 feet of track, 2 minute and 30 second ride duration, 6 inversions, max capacity of 1,300 riders per hour, costs it $16 million, and pulls a maximum of 3 Gs. Which is good, but Sierra Sidewinder pulls 3.1. You suck! So I rode this ride a total of 3 times. 2 times in 2017 and once in 2018. I don't remember what row I sat in for my first ride, but I remember my second ride being towards the back, and my 2018 ride was in row 3. I remember Silver Bullet overall being more intense in my 2017 rides than my 2018 ride, which leads me to believe that back row gives the most intense experience, and overall, this ride is just good. There probably won't be anything that will totally blow you away, but by no means is it a bad ride. If you ride it in the correct rows, you can get a pretty intense ride experience. As of June 2020, this is the only B&M roller coaster I've experienced, so I won't do a lot of comparisons to other B&M coasters. Your silver bullet experience starts when you enter the park. I know where people are coming from when they say that this ride is one of the most photogenic rides out there. It flies over pathways, goes over water, gives you good views of the park, has a great color scheme, and makes for an awesome entrance with its cobra roll. Although the ride excels in looks, it suffers in theming. Apparently it has a Wild West theme, but there's little to no theming in the queue in the station. It kind of seems like an outcast from the rest of Ghost Town. That being said, if it were placed where the rest of Ghost Town is, it would most likely ruin the area's charm and atmosphere. This ride features a regular standby queue and a fast lane queue. I'm pretty positive that it doesn't have a single rider line, but correct me if I'm wrong. This ride has three trains but only runs two with eight cars per train and each car seating four across, leading to a maximum capacity of 32 riders per train. This ride has a very good throughput. Unfortunately, they did do assigned seating the last time I rode it, which led me to being assigned to row three. But I wonder why, because in 2017 they never did that. You pull down your standard B&M over the shoulder restraints, which is just good. Nothing amazing like a pull down lap bar, but it's comfortable, it's not too bulky, and it gets the job done. I don't think too many people will have any problems with these restraints, and some people actually prefer them to vest restraints on dive coasters. You turn to the right out of the station, go up your 146 foot lift hill, enter into the pre-drop, and then the… drop? Well, the drop is non-existent. I felt no forces at all, and it goes at a very shallow angle. 
but it sort of makes up in one minor thing that no one talks about, and that is a great sensation of height. Most inverts give you a short sensation of height because the drop is much steeper, so you'll be close to the ground in no time. But on this, because the pre-drop lasts longer and the drop is not as steep, you really get to enjoy how high you actually are. I noticed this on my first ever ride because I was initially a little nervous, and I wasn't even sitting in the front row. While the drop doesn't give you any sensation of weightlessness, I still enjoyed a nice view of knots with my feet dangling. Haha, <laughs> dangling. I probably made a much bigger deal of this than I should've, but I thought it would be interesting to discuss, and I can't believe I rambled about a non-existing drop. Your scenic view gets interrupted as the coaster pulls into its first inversion, a vertical loop. I found it, meh, towards the front, but pretty forceful towards the back. Next you go through a unique overbank. My thoughts on this are similar to the vertical loop. Towards the back, it gave me some great quote-unquote hang time, but for some reason, felt meh towards the front. That might just be because of bad memory though. You pull up into its most iconic element, a cobra roll. Unfortunately, this is the only part of the ride that has head banging. It was an interruption from the so far smooth experience, but it wasn't too violent. There wasn't much force going through the inversions either, so I'd say that this is my least favorite inversion on the ride. You get your picture taken before going through my favorite inversion on this ride, a zero G roll. It didn't feel whippy, but made up for it in weightlessness. And again, I found it okay towards the front, but very fun towards the back. You go into a 270 degree turn before going into a corkscrew, a little swing to the left, and then a corkscrew in the opposite direction. I didn't find the corkscrews to be a very standout part of the ride, but they're just good. Also that banked airtime hill actually has a little bit of airtime. Then you go through the grand finale of this ride, a 540 degree helix. Without a doubt, this is the most forceful part of the ride. It's a great way to end the ride. After my first ride, my legs felt weak, kind of like jelly, which makes me wonder how will I feel after I ride a more intense invert like Afterburn for example. Finally you hit the brakes, thus ending your ride on Silver Bullet. Besides the drop and the Cobra roll, the layout overall is very good. It has a great selection of inversions and they are executed pretty well. It has a great flow to it that I don't think most inverts can match. I also think the duration is very good. It's not too short, but it's also long enough where they don't need to add a mid-course brake run. It's in a sweet spot. In terms of rider comfort, this ride is one of the smoothest roller coasters I've ever experienced. The only issue is the Cobra Roll, but I was able to look past it. Silver Bullet has some nice positives, especially in the vertical loop and the final helix, but note that a lot of the ride's forces are toned down if you sit towards the front. Silver Bullet looks more gradual than other B&M inverts like Raptor and Afterburn, but that doesn't stop it from being a fun experience. In terms of airtime, you get a great weightless sensation when going through the overbank and the zero-g roll, and even a little bit of airtime on that banked hill. Overall, the pros are good inversions, it's smooth, the helix, appearance, and pre-drop. The cons are the quote-unquote drop, the cobra roll, underwhelming forces towards the front, and theming. I'm going to give this ride a score of 3.8 out of 5. I rank this ride at number 4 in the park, which doesn't mean it's not that good, it's just that the top 3 impressed me more. Of course, since this is the only B&M roller coaster I've ridden, I don't think I should compare this to other inverts, but I'm pretty sure that the more coasters I ride, the less I'll appreciate Silver Bullet. However, my brother and his friends thought this was the best ride at Knott's. I don't agree with that, but I can see where they're coming from because it's cool riding a coaster with your feet hanging off the seat. The ride is not too intense, so naturally it will be more liked overall by the general public, which will help the park gain more money for future expansions. So let me know down in the comments your thoughts on Silver Bullet whether you've ridden it or not. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by leaving a like on this video. And if you're new to this channel and you love roller coasters and other theme park related stuff, please consider subscribing for quality coaster entertainment every one to two weeks. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.